Hey, this is Steve, and this is a quick video about power supplies. Power supplies on control boards come in two typically different types. One's going to be a linear power supply, and the other one's going to be a switching power supply. And a linear supply is going to be, typically you're going to find this very large transformer on there that is kind of dominates the board. And that's a 60 hertz low frequency transformer, which over here takes this 120 volts AC, steps it down to, let's just say 12 volts AC. It's going to be rectified by these rectifier diodes right here. And then that rectified voltage is going to be filtered by a filter capacitor right here. You're going to end up with kind of a low voltage 16.8 volt peak because that's what is um, the rectified voltage of that 12 volt AC RMS is in, in the form of a an unregulated DC filtered voltage. So you're going to have a low voltage 16.8 volts which is going to be further regulated and then into the voltages that you need 12 volts say for your relay circuit and 5 volts for your microprocessor circuit. It's a really simple type of a power supply. It's traditional and is commonly used. It's very stable so if you do have a power surge of some sort, this large bulky transformer can often absorb that. And then um, yeah, uh, oftentimes there's no damage done to the circuit. Not always the case, but if it does fail, then oftentimes you're going to see these diodes over here, these uh, filter or these rectifier diodes failing. Semiconductors love to fail during power, uh, power surges because they have a very limited uh, voltage tolerance. Um, uh, over what they're specified for. So that's what you probably look for in, in, in the case of a, uh, um, an over, over voltage condition is those diodes right there in a linear power supply. Um, they're uh, also low noise, which is a good thing in, in sensitive applications where you, you don't want a lot of uh, noise on your board. Linear power supplies are good in that case and they're very simple uh, as um, shown by this. Here, this may not look simple to everybody, but when you see the next diagram for a switching power supply, relatively speaking, this is going to be simple. Um, the disadvantages to this is that you have this really large transformer. As you can see, it kind of, again, it sort of dominates this board here. That's not going to be the case on a switching power supply. On a linear power supply, though, you have these really big, heavy, expensive transformers. And that's another one of the disadvantages to the um, linear power supply. Those transformers can be kind of expensive, especially when you're making a thousand boards. And they're, you know, they're less efficient than the uh, switching power supply. So that's a linear power supply. And this is a switching power supply on another oven board here. So you can see that transformer is, is way smaller than the, um, on the linear power supply. So you've got your voltage coming in. And what they do on this is they rectify it right away. You get a high voltage DC that's stored on a very high voltage capacitor. So you've got um, the peak value of um, 120 volts RMS is actually 172 volts. So that's rectified. You may end up with 172 volts sitting on a capacitor. So that's a lot. Of, that's pretty high voltage there. You're going to have a switching device that's going to take that DC voltage and turn it into an AC voltage again. And that's going to be, uh, this looks like the switching device on this one here. Uh, but on, on some of these um, switching power supplies, here's another example right here on this this is a board that a lot of technicians are familiar with you're going to have an FET of some sort or some type of a high voltage or high voltage high speed switching device uh, right here that's going to create these pulses and that's going to go into that small transformer there the small transformer and on the secondary of that you're going to have low voltage pulses which are then again rectified by diodes or some type of a rectifier and then you're going to have your output voltage that's already going to be regulated. You don't have to go into another regulator because the regulation occurs here on a feedback loop. You have a voltage sensor, you have a feedback circuit, and you have this thing called an opto-isolator because you want to keep this circuit isolated from the line. Uh, much like the linear power supply, you do not want to have the line directly connected to the output, and DC output, because that's well, that can be a, a shock hazard, among other things. And so in order to isolate that, you have the sink on opto-isolator, which is right there. It goes back and it feeds back to your switching device here. 
uh, through a pulse width modulated oscillator. So you have a pulse width modulated oscillator somewhere in this circuitry here that's going to control this. And the way that's the, the way that the actual uh, voltage is regulated, if this goes too high, say it goes to 13 volts, then this will come back through here. That pulse width is going to get smaller, and then this is going to be high for le less time, and it drops that voltage down to back down to 12 volts. Well, you'll, you'll never see this because this is happening at you know 20,000 times per second. So, which is another advantage of these uh, these uh, high uh, switching power supply transformers are high frequency. When they're high frequency, they can be a lot smaller and, and, and less expensive. So that's how it regulates through a feedback loop there. And uh, again, the advantages of this over the linear power supply is look how small that transformer is. It's super small. It doesn't cost much at all. You're talking, you know, pennies compared to a super large transformer, like relatively like on the other one. Um, it's lightweight. It doesn't dominate the board. Uh, it's a lot more efficient as well. Um, some of the disadvantages to this type of power supply is, is they're very prone to failure from uh, voltage spikes because uh, like on this one here, you see the switching device, you've got a lot of voltage over here and it's having to switch some very high voltages. It's very intolerant of over voltages. And this is a very uh, high, these do experience a high failure rate as these switching devices on these. And um, you know, once the switching power supply, uh, if this shorts out, it can take a bunch of other components because there's a lot going on in switching power supply because they're very complex. So if a switching power supply does fail, you're looking at the possibility of a lot of semiconductors potentially failing on it. If you can get, got, get by just with uh, replacing that uh, switching device, then I would say that you're, you're probably pretty lucky. So that's an overview of power supplies on control boards. Summarize, you got your linear power supply here. It's going to be typically going to have a much larger transformer. It's um, more stable, low noise, simple, uh, yet larger, more expensive, and less efficient. Switching power supply is going to have um, this very small transformer. Higher frequency, it's more efficient, less expensive to make. Lightweight, yet at the same time it is complex. It can be noisier and is uh, potentially more uh, prone to failure. So I hope that has been helpful and thanks for watching.